Hi friends, today we'll discuss some of the techniques used for constructing Turing machine. The Turing machine defined and designed till now is called the standard Turing machine. Let us see some high level conceptual tools to make the construction of Turing machines easier. There are four techniques. They are Turing machine with stationary head, storage in the state, multi-track Turing machine and subroutines. So let us see all the four in detail. The first technique is Turing machine with stationary head. In the definition of the Turing machine, we have defined delta of q0 x goes to q1 y d where d represents l or r that is the head moves to the left or right after reading an input symbol now suppose we want to include the option that head can continue to be in the same cell for some input symbol then at that time we can represent D as S. That is, on reading input X, the Turing machine changes the state from Q0 to Q1, replaces X by Y in the current cell, and continues to remain in the same cell. So, in this model of Turing machine with stationary head, in the direction, we will be having three options, left, right or same. Let us see an example of Turing machine with stationary head. Initially, the read right head is pointing to A and at state Q0. In the next move, A is replaced as X. State Q0 is changed to Q1 and the read write head is still in the same cell. The instantaneous descriptions are Q0 A A B B goes to Q1 X A B B. The same can also be simulated by using our standard Turing machine with two moves that is initially Turing machine is at Q0 pointing to A. So in the next move change the state from Q0 to some intermediate state Q2 A as X and move towards the right and in the second move Change the intermediate state to the required state that is Q1. Keep the tape symbols as it is. Just move towards the left. So with these two moves, we can simulate the Turing machine with stationary head using standard Turing machine. Second technique is storage in the state. State is used in finite state machine or push down automata or Turing machine to remember things. We can use a state to store a symbol as well. So the state becomes a pair Q comma A where Q is a state and A is a tape symbol stored in the state Q comma A. So the new set of states become Q into tau. For example, let us design a Turing machine that accepts the language 0, 1 star or 1 star 0 using storage in the state. 
the machine consists of two states q0 q1 with tape input symbols 0 1 b initial state q0 b and final state q1 b so the initial state is q0 for the input a which is the first symbol of the input string w reaches a new state q1 a so now the machine is at the state q1 a if the next symbol is b then m goes to state q1 b which is an accepting or final state else if the next symbol is a then m halts without entering the final state that is it halts in some non accepting state if the next symbol is a dash that is a is equals to 0 if a dash is 1 and a is equals to 1 if a dash is equals to 0 then m moves without changing the state and this step is repeated until m reaches q1 b or it halts the third technique is multiple track turing machine in this machine a single tape is assumed to be divided into several tracks the tape alphabet is required to consist of k tuples of tape symbols k being the number of tracks hence the only difference between the standard turing machine and the turing machine with multiple tracks is the set of tape symbols in the case of standard turing machine tape symbols are elements of tau in case of turing machine with multiple track it is tau raised to k so single tape can be divided into several tracks so here one cell is divided into two tracks ba is one symbol so each tape symbol can be a composite of characters rather than just a single one. Let us see an example where at state Q0, the read write head is pointing to a two track cell with a symbol BA. That is replaced as from q0 to q1 ba is replaced as cd and the read write head is moved towards the left so this is how multi track turing machine works so the last technique is subroutine subroutines are used in computer languages when some task has to be done repeatedly the same facility can also be implemented in turing machines for using subroutines we go for introducing new states in the main program of a turing machine if there is a call for a subroutine then it enters into the initial state of the subroutine and on entering into the return state of the subroutine it returns back to the main program of the turing machine the subroutine has an initial state and a return state and after reaching the return state there is a temporary halt. For example, let us design a Turing machine for performing multiplication of two positive integers, where input is 
m starting with 0 raised to m, 1, 0 raised to n in its state where m and n are positive integers and the output is 0 raised to m n surrounded by b's. The steps used to construct the Turing machine are initially 0 raised to m 1 0 raised to n 1 is placed on the tape and the output will be written after the rightmost 1. In the second step, the leftmost 0 is erased and a block of n number of zeros is copied on the right end. And this step 2 and 3 will be repeated m times. And the string obtained in the tape is 1, 0 raised to m, 1, 0 raised to m, n. And the prefix 1, 0 raised to m, 1 of this string is erased, leaving the product m, n as the output. So here, for every 0 in 0 raised to m, 0 raised to n is added onto the right end. So this requires repetition of step 3. So for this step 3, we go for defining a subroutine called copy. For the subroutine copy, the initial state is Q1 and final state is Q5. The delta transitions are given in the transition table. The Turing machine M has the initial state Q0. The initial ID for M is Q0, 0 raised to M1, 0 raised to N1. On seeing 0, the following moves take place. Q0 on seeing 0 replaces 0 by B, move towards the right and change the state from Q0 to Q6, where Q6 is a state in M. And for the rest, 0 raised to M minus 1, zeros are kept as it is, state is Q6 and it will just move towards the right until it comes across a first 1. Once it comes across a 1, 1 is kept as it is, state is changed from Q6 to Q1 where Q1 is the initial state of the copy and the Turing machine M1 performs the subroutine copy. The following moves take place for M1 where after exhausting zeros Q1 encounters 1 and M1 moves to state Q4. All 2s are converted back to zeros and M1 halts in Q5. The Turing machine M picks up the computation by starting from Q5. The Q0 and Q6 are the states of M. Additional states are created to check whether each of 0 in 0 raised to M give rise to 0 raised to M at the end of the rightmost one in the input string. Once this is over, M erases 1 0 raised to N 1 and finds 0 raised to M N in the input tape. The Turing machine M can be defined by M is equals to Q0, Q1, so on up to Q12 states, summation as 0, 1. Tape symbols are 0, 1, 2 and B. 
Delta transitions are represented in the form of transition table. Initial state is Q0, blank symbol as B, final state is Q12. And M performs multiplication of two numbers in unary representation. In this lecture, we discussed Turing machine with stationary head, storage in the state, multi-track Turing machine, and subroutines, four techniques used for constructing the Turing machines. Thank you.